in water. Uh, the first step? Yes. Water solvent? Yeah. I uh, could be right. I don't have that memorized, but you yeah. got that in your notes. Yeah, that actually makes sense. It should be in water. All right. Okay, I didn't even remember this reaction. All right, so it's pretty complicated. Uh, let's see here. So we've got, what's this called? Oxymercuration, demercuration. So we use this mercury-containing compound. Uh, the mercury-containing compound makes itself into an electrophile over here. And then again, we have one of these double attacks, where the double bond attacks the mercury at the same time as the mercury uses a lone pair to attack the double bond. Is so that we, why it stays with a plus charge? Because... It's on both an end and a tail. That is the precise and correct analysis. That That's right. If you look at this, it's both at a head and a tail, so its charge should not change. In the past, I've always said that you should look for the person at the initial tail and the final head, but there is no initial tail or final head here because there's a cycle, so nobody's charge should change over here. Nobody's charge changes because there is no initial tail or final head. So we do end up with a charge here. What's that called? Mercurinium. We know that we say onium or inium when we've got a charge. This is mercurinium. And this is our, something we've seen in the past, a small little cycle over here. And then uh, it looks out, it seems like you were right. We should certainly do this in water so we can have a water nucleophile come in and attack. Now, why do I have the water here attacking the more substituted carbon and not the less substituted carbon? This is an important part of this reaction. Um, because... Let's actually talk to that together. It's really not obvious. Yeah, so this will give us, uh, this will definitely be the major product or maybe close to the only product over here. And the reason is 
this is really a very unstable kind of ring over here, right? This three-membered ring. It's actually going back and forth between a bunch of different uh, outcomes. Sometimes it's a three-membered ring, but sometimes one of these bonds breaks. And we just end up with a carbocation. Sometimes this bond breaks and we end up with a carbocation. And maybe sometimes this bond breaks. And we end up with the carbocation over here. This is constantly equilibrating between those three forms. We're constantly equilibrating between the form where we have a three membered ring and the form where one of the bonds breaks and we have a positive charge on one of those atoms. So you definitely should really think of this positive charge as being spread over these three atoms. You should think of the positive charge as being spread over the three atoms. And it really is like the water ended up attacking a carbocation over here. Well, which of these two carbons will be able to sustain the most carbocation character? The more stabilized. So even though this doesn't look like a carbocation, we should treat this like a carbocation. This is really not obvious. We really just have to learn this. We should treat this like a carbocation. Because there really are a bunch of, uh, there's two other forms where there's carbocation character on the left hand or the right hand carbon. But which of them is going to have the most carbocation character, the one that can stabilize the charge the best? And that's going to be the more substituted. So that explains why definitely the major product here will be the water attacking the more substituted carbon because it would have the most carbocation character because it can stabilize that charge the best. That's a kind of complicated argument. But this should have the most carbocation character because it can stabilize the positive charge the best. And so the water uh, should be most likely to attack here since this is the one that's most like a carbocation. So this is Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? Markovnikov, but shouldn't, if that's the case for that, shouldn't that be the case for all the other ones? Like, like the ones we did with the the BH two or whatever. Yeah, because here they make a cyclic ring where it's the plus charge is spread on the three carbons. Now that's a good point. The example that you picked out wasn't quite right because with the with the boring we don't form a three membered uh, ring. There are no the charges. Other ones we do form rings like with bromine. Exactly. That's right. And maybe we should have talked about that in the past, but that's true. So for example, let's say. Let's say we did this reaction. If we did this reaction with Br2 and water, we know that the intermediate would look like this, bromonium. And again, there's really carbocation character at both of these carbons, but the one that has the most carbocation character is the most stabilized. So when the water comes in, where is it going to come in? On the more substituted. So, so that is important for predicting so the ratio chemistry. In the past, when we've been doing it on both sides, that was really not correct. We should only have it on one. The examples I gave you in the past were all examples where the two carbons were equivalent. So when we talked about it, I purposely gave you simplified examples where these two carbons were equivalent. Okay. But if they're not equivalent, then you do need to have the water attacking the more substituted carbon. That's right. So that was also my problem. That's right. This is, uh, I suppose it's called Markovnikov. It's a lot harder to define because here we have two electronegative atoms. Both the bromine and the oxygen are, are electronegative. Uh, but whether you call it Markovnikov or not, the key thing is you end up with the alcohol on the more substituted carbon. You would end up with the alcohol on the more substituted carbon. So in general, anytime we get these onium ions, these three-membered onium ions, if there's a difference between the two carbons, you're going to prefer to attack the more substituted because it has more carbocation character, because it can stabilize that carbocation character better. So this is a good example of that. And here's another example of that. In fact, these two reactions are almost identical. These are pretty much the same reaction over here. It's just in this reaction, we add bromine first. And here, we're adding this weird mercury-containing compound first. They're pretty much the same thing. bottom of uh, page two of the handout. The regiochemistry for these halo alcohol syntheses is that the OHS, the more substituted carbon. All right, so we still have some stuff to talk about here. So the water would attach to the more substituted, forming the Markovnikov. Uh, that gives us this. Then this has to deprotonate. Uh, we might as well use another water molecule to deprotonate it. And at this point, we were forming a stereocenter. Is it OK if we use the acetate um, ion that was made from the breaking of the mercury. Like when you get the. the that seems fine. That's right. So this also produced acetate. That would be fine too. That would be fine too. 